Hello good people and welcome to Finance Skills Hub here. We learn, we connect and we grow. The introduction of generative AI tools like ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, Claude and the rest has really changed the way we work. They've helped us reduce the time that we'd use probably to research, clean data and all those things that will typically take time. So in this short video, I want to show you an exciting example of how you can use Power Query and ChatGPT to reduce the steps it will normally take you to clean data. So if you are again, let me show you how you can take advantage of these tools and your regular Power Query to save time at the office. Let's get started. Okay, so we we'll begin with this start file with data on inventory. So there are three sheets there. This file has been shared with you in the YouTube description, so you can come along. So we have this sheet that speaks to inventory data, quantity received, dispatched, inventory remaining, and so on. Then there's also sales price list, giving us the prices of the items that are in the inventory. And then we have warehouse information. So typically, these two are dimension tables, and then we have our fact table here. But if you go into the inventory data, there are some things that need fixing, right? So if you look at the item ID, you realize that there are some leading zeros. And by the way, while I'm here, let me introduce you to the new feature, Focus Cell, right? So if you have Office 365, this is the new feature that allows you to bring color to the columns or rows that you highlight, just to keep things in focus. Pretty exciting. So you can even go here and then change the color, right? So under view, you can activate this. Now, if you look at item ID, as I mentioned earlier, there are leading zeros we need to get rid of. The case for the product names in item name is also not consistent. We have a mix. Then we need to also work on the data type for receipt date and dispatch date, right? So at a very basic level, we can do this in Power Query. So what I want to do is go through the regular steps that we use to get these changes done in Power Query. Then we will use ChatGPT to see how easy these steps have become. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to convert this range into a table. So to do that, I can go to insert and then I will insert a table. I could also press Ctrl T to get this done. So I'll highlight this. My table design pops up. I'm going to name this inventory. Okay, so this is my first table. Then I'll come to the second table. This is the prices data. Do same, so control T, and I'm going to name this prices. Okay. Then I'll do the same thing for warehouse. So control T for this one. And I'll name this warehouse. Okay. So we have three tables, but our focus is on the inventory table. So I'm going to load this for now into Power Query. So to do that, because it's a table, I'll come to data, right? So to initiate Power Query, we use the get and transform data group. This is the icon for loading from a table. So with the table selected, I'll click on this to take me to Power Query. Okay, so this brings me to Power Query. Now you see I have my item ID and all the columns I loaded with all the problems as well. So let's find out how we we'll do this normally. So for removing the leading zeros in item ID, right, we could just replace the two leading zeros, which appears to be consistent with nothing, right? But there's a catch here. If you go into the last record, you realize that there is also a number that has two zeros, okay? So if I proceed and I right click, and let's say I replace the two leading zeros in the item ID, so two zeros with nothing, I'm not only removing the leading zero, but I'm also, but I'm also getting rid of the zeros in the last hundred, right? So it will give me something like this, right? So this is not going to help. So how do we do this? Well, I mean, the human being always has a way to get around things. So I'm going to reverse this step and then we take a look at what should be done. So instead of removing the leading zero, I'll rather replace 00i, okay? So 00i appears to be the consistent 
prefix for all the items that have the leading zero. So I'll right click again and then repeat the same step. So instead of the leading zero, I'll do zero zero and then the I before item. Okay. So this one I'm replacing with I. Okay. So if I do it this way, then I'm sure that the zeros in the hundred will not be affected. So let's proceed with this. Okay, so let's check if our 100 is intact, it is. I've intentionally added this example to see if ChatGPT is able to get around this. Okay, now the next step is to put an underscore between item and the number, right? That is similar to what we did. Again, you can replace value. So again, I'll right click, replace values. So instead of item, I want this to be item underscore, right? So we are doing this so that it matches the item codes in the sales table, right? So if I do this, then consistently, I have an underscore going through all the item IDs I have here. So this solves the problem for the item ID, two corrections. Now let's come to the item name. Here we have a mix of cases. So for us to get that consistent proper case, right? I'll just come to transform. Then over here, I'll go to format. And my job here is to capitalize each word, right? So with this column selected, I'll just capitalize each word and I have this consistently corrected for all the cases in the products. Okay. So this is our third correction. And then the final thing that we want to do is to convert the data type for receipt dates into a proper date instead of date and time. That can easily be fixed. We'll click on this icon and then we change this to dates. Repeat same for this one and then we make this also dates. Okay. So for this example, these are the steps that I have used so far to be able to achieve or transform the query up to this stage. Now we want to see if ChatGPT can get this right at a go. The method that I will use is this. So if you do transformations in Power Query, you know that every step generates an M code. Okay, so the M code is running in the background. You can access the M code that has brought us this far under home, right? You see the advanced editor here. So if I go to the advanced editor, this is the code that I have, right? Because ChatGPT cannot work directly in Power Query, what we needed to do is to be able to execute this same M code that will be able to generate all the steps that we have used so far to get the data to this point, right? So that's the approach we are going to use. So now that you understand how to get this done, I'm going to close the query without saving. So I'm going to discard this, okay? And then start the process again. Now, the reason I have to start the process again is if I load the query, I would give ChatGPT context. I am not directly loading the entire table so just to know what kind of table I'm using, the columns that are in there, I'll give it the preliminary M code, okay? So that it uses that as context to give me what I'm looking for. So let's start the process again. So this time around, I'll come to data, come to the table icon, and then click on this. So usually when you load data into Power Query, there are some automatic steps that are already applied. So the source, Okay, which tells us the name of the table and then the change type, which usually has the columns or fields that are in there, right? So these would give ChatGPT context to profile the table or the query we are bringing. So with this, I'm going to the advanced editor, okay? And I'm going to copy this preliminary M code. So I'll step in here, control C, this is all I need. So I'll leave this on standby. Now I'll come to ChatGPT and then provide the prompt stating all the requirements that I need to transform the data. So I have my ChatGPT on standby here. For this demo, I'm using the free version so that you know that it can be accessible even if you are using the free version. So I have this on standby. The first thing I want to do is to paste the prompt I just copied. Okay, so standing in here, I'll paste the prompt. So this is the prompt, right? 
then I'll press shift enter for a line break. So what I want to do is I'm going to refer it to this prompt to give it context and then ask it to execute all the steps that I'm looking for. So the prompt is just as I'm saying it. So this is called natural language processing. So to save time, I've already created the prompt. So I'm just going to paste it here and then we'll go through, right? So this is the prompt I'm given that above, what is the text that I just pasted is the M code for the spreadsheet loaded in Excel's Power Query. Please modify the code to transform the data in the inventory table to achieve the following results, right? So at this point, I can now give it all the transformation that I need. So one, delete all leading zeros in item ID column without affecting the last record, which has two zeros, right? So you need to know whether I can get around that challenge that we had. Then two, it has to place an underscore after item in the ID column to match the content in the prices table. Okay, so that is the second one. And then number three is to make the case in the product ID column a proper case. And then number four, format the receipt date and dispatch date column to a date data type. Okay, so if you actually have more steps to transform, maybe you're not too sure where to click in Power Query to achieve that, you can list them. Right. So this is what we want. I would expect a little randomness in the response, but hopefully you can get it right. So let's see what it's able to give us. I am going to commit this. So it goes ahead to create the modified M code to achieve the specified transformations. So what I normally like about the M code generated by ChatGPT is that it actually comments so that you see the steps that it is executing. Okay, so all these double slashes will help you know what is happening at each point in the code, right? So it appears it is done. It goes ahead to also explain the kind of modifications it is doing. Okay, so this is fine. So all I'm going to do is at this point, I'll come and then I'll copy this code. So this entire code has been copied. I'll come back to Power Query, okay? And go back to Advanced Editor, right? So in Power Query, the M code is progressive. It executes all the steps up to the point you are. So if I replace this existing one with what I have copied, the expectation is that it would execute all those steps at a go. So I'll select this Control A, and then I'll just paste over what I just copied. Okay. So you realize that everything has been nicely formatted in here. For starters, it helps if you don't have any error over here. So I'm going to commit this. I'll go ahead and click done. So this is what it was able to achieve. So it starts with the source. Then we come to the change type. It removed all the leading zeros. So here we need to check if it got a hundred part right. I'll come all the way down. It maintained it is intact. Then it added the underscore. Okay. Which is the fourth step. Then it came to the item name and then changed this to a proper case. And then finally it formatted the dates, right? So this is very exciting because even if you don't know where to click in Power Query to get this done, with just a natural language query, you should be able to get this done, especially when you provide that preliminary M code as context. So if you don't even load the Excel data, some of these things can be fast tracked. So hopefully you get the idea. I'm sure you want to try this on existing data, but the catch here is that if you use these things side by side, you can get a lot of things done in a few seconds or minutes. So please practice and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining us. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.